Eddie Amos from Juniper. Okay, come on in. We've been waiting to, for you guys. Good job. Nice to meet you. Good to see you. All right. Dave Vellante. We've been covering Juniper in the news on SiliconAngle.com in the past couple days. You guys uh, announced uh, um, some things this week here at Java One uh, around Junos. Junos Lab, was it? uh, uh, Juno Space and uh, things space. we're doing around Juno Sphere and, and various things that we're doing around the network and programmability on the network today. Okay, great. And uh, obviously Juniper, Cisco, you guys are retooling. There was a, there was a rumor and confirmed about some layoffs at Juniper, which was I was corrected by your, your PR team that yes, there were layoffs at Juniper, but overall headcount is increasing, um, which was confirmed by you guys. Um, but that speaks to the changes at Juniper. I've been covering Juniper for a few years now. Um, you guys have had Junos out there. It's been you were the first first company really to put out this software approach. 321 has been the network uh, kind of positioning, kind of flattening the network east-west, north-south, more east-west. Um, give us an update, which has been a compelling announcement. Um, there's been some talk that Junos has not had the uptake folks had expected, but the market is changing, but still relevant. So uh, what I wanted to ask you is one, give us an update on the networking space. Obviously Cisco has its own challenges and they're kind of underwater. Juniper's uh, doing well. Talk about What's changing in that pure play networking space? And then talk about, let's talk about the software role, the software play is obviously a key area. As we sit back and we look at what's going on in the networking space, it's very dynamic. If you sit back and if you read uh, the various publications and believe the various schools of thought and Internet of Things or a billion connected devices, we're going to hit a wall pretty soon in terms of the amount of traffic and what can happen on the Internet. So we actually think we're in a sweet spot. If you look at the innovation that we brought to the market in the early days uh, and what Pradeep actually brought when he created Juniper, I think the market's still very relative and we continue to expand out our product line to address the growing needs of the market. So you guys had two... I think key things in the past two years that I think it was very notable with Juniper. One was the, really of, of all the vendors, the first to focus on mobile. Correct. And the other one was Junos and Junos Space as an operating system. Um, where are we with those two things with Juniper? Can you give us a quick update on, on where they stand? Obviously mobile security you guys have been talking a lot about lately. Sure. Um, just give us the update on mobile and then Junos. So, of course, on the mobile space, we have Junos Pulse, and it's uh, the uptake on Junos Pulse has been very dramatic in terms of if you look at the mobile operators and folks that are looking to adopt it to add that extra layer of security on to, and extra services to their end customers. In terms of what's happening with Junos and in space today, well, Junos, as you know, is uh, our single OS across our various devices. And due customer demand and various uh, things that's happened over the years, we've exposed more and more of that functionality out through the Junos SDK. That uh, work continues to be formalized. Uh, we've announced that uh, we're going to expose all the SDK work out in the Eclipse IDE. Uh, we're getting very, very aggressive in terms of getting more use cases out to meet the needs of not just the service providers, but also our enterprise customers. So if you think about Junos, it runs on the boxes. And if you think about the middleware component that runs across the various devices, that's Juno Space. And the interesting thing that I'm starting to see with Juno Space is, is the wide array of applications that are being built on it today. Uh, not only do you have network monitoring solutions, you've also got you know, energy management companies like Global uh, Knowledge who are coming back and building interesting things to come back and look at you know, carbon offsets or how to you know, manage the various devices within your enterprise. So we continue to you know, enhance and you know, get more functionality out in the market. Out on uh, the Java One stage, we've got four or five really compelling applications, everything from uh, load balancing on the router to interesting things that we've worked with in terms of exposing the APIs uh, using Connect technology to show folks how they can do like the minority report type of moving screens around. So it's been a lot of fun and I think people are starting to see a lot of value in what we're bringing so to the market. That's your main emphasis at the show here is Java One, right? Is that, is that correct? Correct. You guys are sponsoring. We're, we're, we're a sponsor at Java One and uh, we're, we looked at uh, this as an opportunity for us to come out and start talking to a broader audience about what we're doing with uh, the programmatality uh, piece of the network. As you may or may not know, Bob Muglia joined us from Microsoft. Bob, my old boss for many, many years, that brings an extra dimension in terms of things that we're doing. Uh, you know, Bob is software core, you know, through and through. And when you take Bob's knowledge of software and what we're doing with Silicon and Systems, it's a win-win, I think, for our customers. Well, you've talked about the programmable network. I mean, yep. what is it? You know, talk about that a little yeah, bit. Yeah, so think about it. For programmers for years and years and years, if you want to get down to that core network components, you have to go through some pretty unnatural acts. Sure, we can come back and give you 
triangulation on your cell phone. We can come back and give you, you know, a little bit of this or a little bit of that, but the real power has always been into the network protocols themselves. The problem is all of that's been controlled by a, you know, a very, very few folks within the, the enterprise. So how do you take that power and actually abstract it out so normal developers can take things and take advantage of that power? So that's what we've done with both Junos and Juno Space SDK. We've actually taken it, abstracted it out, and then we give both the service providers and our enterprise customers new and interesting ways to come out and take advantage of the power of the network. I've always been impressed with Juniper, obviously Pradeep, who I've interviewed a few times, uh, been to some of your events in Barcelona, Mobile World Congress. Um, impressive vision. Uh, he's still involved in the company, and you guys obviously have the Microsoft uh, execs coming over there, leading the company. Um, but the world's changed a bit in the past two years, and Juniper's always had a nice position with the mobile focus and with Junos with software. A um, couple things, obviously here it's big data, yep. right? So obviously big data implies analytics, uh, and if you look at all the big data examples, whether it's SAP or Oracle, they run on an iPad, they run on mobile phones. So you know, real-time analytics is dashboard based, so mobile plays a big part in that. So I want to talk about that for a second. The other one is the software you mentioned, Junos. Um, I'll see HP is doing very well in the converged networking space around how they're organizing their business with storage and uh, networking and servers. Um, but also there's new movements around so the software network. Mm -hmm. Things like OpenFlow, for example, um, is out there. So talk about two things. The mobile world relative to analytics and the role security plays in accessing the data. And two, software in the network as people talk about the software switch. Right. Those are two areas that are now emerging and are pretty fundamental and relevant. A lot of people don't know about it. Can you share uh, anything on that? Yeah, so we sit back and we look at, uh, like on the mobile space and what's going on with big data. One of the things that we made a conscious effort when we built space was make sure that we're taking the components and expose them out through RESTful APIs. I have no idea about how much programming language my developers want to use. They could be all across the board, whether it's a .NET, a Java, uh, you know, a Perl scripter. So I want to make sure that I'm exposing those components out in something they can use. So if you think about big data, all of the information that's coming out of the network is just another great source. I mean, you hear folks talk about structured and unstructured data. We can provide a lot of interesting structured data that's going across the network through our approach, and then exposing them out through RESTful APIs, it's very easy to bring it into an iPad, an iPhone, you know, an Android device, a Windows Mobile. We really don't care from a client perspective. I got a pretty interesting application on my uh, iPad uh, today that we put together for the show. I'm actually consuming four web services and I can tell you anything and everything about what's going on with four routers on my network. Very, very compelling. So it's easy to extract that out, but you want to make sure that the data that you're giving folks is relevant to what they're trying to do. In our case, it's about networking, how companies are going to run their network and optimize for the end customers. Now, when you mention things such as you know, uh, you know, OpenFlow, it's interesting, when you sit back and you hear all the companies jumping on the bandwagon, the first uh, commercial- Heavily, heavily venture back, too. You have Absolutely. a couple in the space with $30 million in the bank, $60 million in the bank. I mean, there's a land grab going on there, so to but, expl to <laughs> explain to you what's going on there. But it's interesting, when you sit back and you look at one of the first commercial implementations of OpenFlow, it's on Juniper Equipment. Why? Because a company named BigSwitch actually took our SDKs and built out an implementation on it. Yep, well, it goes, back, took up yep. That. goes back to the open nature of what we're trying to do as a company. Now, we'll continue to push the envelope on anything and everything to make sure that our systems, silicon and software, will meet the needs of our customer, but we have to be open enough to make sure that our customers and partners who want to take advantage of those Ex can. Explain, we've got 450 people watching right now who might not know the nuances of Junos. What's the magic going on in the software that enables a, a, a big switch which a couple startup founders um, get your SDK, um, get some uh, venture funding, and can get into the marketplace pretty quickly. Talk about what you guys are enabling with that uh, for startups like, like Big Switch and others, and then what it means for like carriers and, and companies. What's going on there that, can you, can you explain yeah. that and simplify that a little so bit? So when you go back and you talk to the founders of Big Switch or Kyle, the marketing folks and things like this, if they had to go back and recreate this infrastructure, Wow, it's going to take them a long time to come back and build it. Those guys have an, uh, you know, an incredible amount of you know, knowledge and IP on this subject matter. To be able to take a platform that actually supports this and let them build it out on was a win-win solution for them. So A, I, I credit the founders of Big Switch to actually looking and surveying the market to find a platform that was ready for their ideas so they could build it off of. And then coming to us and say, look at what we've done. Great, that's what you do with an open API set for folks that want to come out and build great applications. Now, your question about the service providers. 
Well, service providers have many, many things they're trying to do. I mean, a lot of them are getting killed with over-the-top traffic. I want to make sure that we can come back and give them access to our API so they can come back and think about anything and everything possible in terms of traffic optimization, video insertion, deep packet inspection, you know, edge devices, things in the data center, things that we are good at at Juniper, just making sure that we're exposing those APIs out so they can build those great applications. So converged networking is essentially a speeds and feeds thing where you got kind of hardware integration, um, talk about the innovations around software, around OpenFlow as an example. Obviously it's, a, it's an indicator, we're kind of where the market's going. What benefits does someone get with Juniper and what are you guys doing in that software world? And you know, we have things like virtualization out there. Sure. So this kind of all ties together. You got mobile, but in specifically, what is the software doing at that level and beyond the hardware? So once again, you know, the, when we sat back and we put Junos out there, it was to come back and make sure that we could manage and optimize what we're doing with our routers and switches. But the added benefit is the, ex the actual innovation that will come to come out and create new protocols or new ideas. That's what happens when you build a developer network. I mean, I would love to be able to come back and build every scenario known to mankind and every customer requirement that comes my way, but I don't think there's enough engineers in Silicon Valley to handle that. But being able to give these companies the guidance, being able to give them the bits, I'm pretty sure that they got some pretty smart uh, developers all around this valley that will build the next big thing. I'm just an enabler of that technology in many ways. Hey, Eddie, I wonder if you could talk about the co competitive landscape a little bit. Not necessarily um, individual competitors, but the concept of best of breed versus sort of the vertically integrated approaches. You're seeing a lot of consolidation in the industry. You guys are obviously a focused uh, a, a player. Obviously, you consider yourself, I'm sure, best of breed. Talk about that. Um, with all the consolidation in the industry, what do you guys see going on there, and, and what's your position on that? I mean, you're always going to have competition in a market. I mean, the thing is, is that you go into most uh, you know, companies, it's going to be a very heterogeneous environment, whether you're in an enterprise or you're in a service provider. Being able to make sure that we're providing that best of breed and key interoperability into those components, that will be he who wins. So when you sit back and look at things that we're doing, we, we spend a, or maniacally focus to make sure that we continue to push the envelope, not just on speeds and feeds, but also solutions that run on top of that, and also being able to make sure that we have the right interoperability. If you look at some of the announcements around things like QFabric, Pretty revolutionary in terms of 321, as we talked about earlier. It's basically just simplifying that equation so that you don't have a thousand moving parts because, A, as you know, the more moving components, the more likely something's going to break. So is it is it getting harder to justify in your customer base that, that in investment in best of breed or no because you're able to do that integration through software and other, other you know, partnership approaches? I mean, do, do people want a single throat to choke? Um, and, and, and if not, or, um, why you? Yeah. Well, I'm not a psychiatrist or a sociologist, <laughs> so I, I can't answer that question. What are you hearing in the customer yeah. base? I but mean, uh, it's a, it's what a I hear from question. customers is they want the best solution that addresses their needs, and if it's best to breed, so be it. So when we were out talking to folks, they want to know about what we're going to do to help them solve real life problems that they're facing every day. And I think that's what our sales force is maniacally focused on. I think that's the solutions that we bring to market. Do you think there's a difference between um, I mean, there's clearly a difference, but talk about the difference between service providers and, and traditional IT. You, know, you hear, you talk to IT people, you hear, do more with less, budgets are flattened down. Talk to service providers, you hear the exact opposite. We're growing like crazy, um, we're innovating, you guys sell to a lot of service providers. What are you seeing there, and what do you think that means for the industry going forward? Well, you know, who knows in this economic environment, we do know that, you know, as we sit back and we talk to our customers, that they're still willing to pay a premium for good value and for things that's going to help them solve needs. In terms of the economic cycles, I'm not a Wall Street expert. You see the cycles and the durations in the market like everyone else does, but uh, I continue to be impressed and encouraged when I go out and talk to customers, especially the developer world, about what we're doing and the value that we're bringing to market. Uh, so, so you guys are at Java One and uh, it's really kind of, out in the other side of the town. Yeah. So, but there's been great feedback from developers, but it's pretty exciting over there from what we've been finding out yesterday and reporting on on our site. Um, and I, we had Red Hat on yesterday and we were talking about uh, the demand in the marketplace and open versus closed. Obviously Oracle sure. has a specific you know, purpose-built kind of focus. Um, Cisco's always kind of had this closed architecture end-to-end. -end. You guys have been really first movers in a lot of areas that we mentioned mobile and Junos, um, but you guys are open. 
um, with the software approach. The question is, open versus closed. Where are we in the industry? I see Java One and MySQL, you know, Oracle now, but still open source. Um, open source has grown. You guys have uh, had Junos out there. Um, what do people need to know about, one, the open source movement relative to the networking side, we talked about software, and then two, in general, this purpose-built versus open architectures, these debates that are out there. Could you I mean, I elaborate always, on that? I think you're always going to have debate in terms of open versus proprietary. I mean, that's just the nature yeah. of the beast. But I think the, the, the folks that end up winning is the ones that take the best you know, of both worlds and merge them together and come back to satisfy the needs of the customer. At the end of the day, you know, you'll sit back and you'll hear various customers saying, well, you know, what the spec says is this, but what I really want is that. You know, that's when you cross that line from being open to proprietary. And even things that could be written on open, who's to say that it's not proprietary writing on something top of something that is open. So I think you will have that mixed world for quite yeah. a, a period of time to come. And you know, our approach is we want to make sure that we have our APs out, APIs that are well documented, open, that folks can come back and uh, build new and interesting things. What are you hearing from your customer base in terms of the developers out there? And this is a developer question. Sure. Because the enterprises are investing, although budgets are flat, as Dave said, but there's a renewed project base around real doing more top line, drive the business, less cost reduction, more kind of create top line. What are you hearing in the developer community within your customer base, both on the IT side and service providers? What's their core concerns um, that you hear, that you guys are addressing? Well, I would hear different concerns on the developer side of the house than you would on the IT pro side of the house, yeah. the folks that actually run uh, you know, the, the routers and the switches and the data center. But when I talk to developers, their whole thing is, how can you give me the access to what I need? Can you help me solve this problem in a simplified manner so I don't have to go through, you know, 100 lines of code when I could do it with two lines of code? So the developers are simplicity, it's time to market, how we can make the tooling easier, how we can make the whole experience easier, how we can give them the use case, the reference architecture, and the bits to help them solve their problems. Eddie, what are your thoughts on, on platform as a service? There's a lot of different options out there. It's confusing for a lot of people. What, what are you seeing in the, in the, in the marketplace, and what are, you, what, are you, what, are you, what are you forecasting there? I know you don't like to prognosticate, <laughs> but, but you're out there, you're in the, you're in the trenches. We want to, you know, our audience wants to know what you think. Well, I mean, a lot of it is you can look at you know, platform as a service, infrastructure as a service, software as a service, they all have their niche. It depends on what you're trying to accomplish. I mean, you sit back and look at some of the players, such as an Azure and EC2, they've done a wonderful job. Salesforce buys Heroku, very interesting move. You sit back and look at the other players out there. So it kind of goes back to what niche you're trying to solve and what problem that you're trying to solve. So I think over time, the platform as a service movement, it's starting to take off. It's going to get a little bit more legs uh, as you come out and you want to build out you know, applications and get things going. But then and again, how many companies do you see that has a pure SaaS play? People just want to you know, take that uh, various component and not deal with it in their Simple, data centers. Yeah. So, I, you know, I think there's going to be room for all three. We'll see how it emerges over the next five years. You, you guys, the beautiful thing about it, they all require routers and switches, which we're, hopefully we can help them with. Yeah, you guys got a great reputation, no doubt, on the product side. And, and I always felt that Juniper is a little bit um, not as well promoted in, in, in the marketplace in terms of getting the message out there. Um, you kind of always have been on the shadow of Cisco and but always been great on the leadership side of product. Um, my question is more a management question. Actually, Kevin Johnson's been at the helm for a while. You mentioned you That's came years, in and worked right? for Bob at Microsoft. What's going on at Juniper right now with the management team? Obviously, um, and Pradeep is still there, the founder is still around, doing a great job, very active, um, great vision, really relevant. What's the, what's the vibe like within Juniper at the top of the company, the management team? I just got some Microsoft DNA. Um, tell us, share with us what's going on internally. Well, I got to tell you, I mean, Juniper has one of the most unique cultures in any place I've probably ever worked in my life. I mean, from Microsoft to IBM to several startups. It's one of you know, mutual respect, it's an incredible culture, it's very innovative, and I think that all comes from the leadership team. Whether it's Pradeep going to the whiteboard, Kevin thinking about a new business idea, you know, bringing in someone like Jerry Elliott to do sales, it's an incredible bunch of folks there. RK with uh, you know, things that we're doing around QFabric. So in terms of you know, what's the buzz and the feel, I think the buzz and feel is pretty strong in terms of you know, what we can offer as a company and the direction that we're heading. I'm very pleased with this leadership team. Hey, Juniper Networks, Eddie, Amos, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Yeah, nice thanks to a lot, you. guys. Uh, nice to meet you, Eddie. Good Thank luck you. with the show.